broken iron. What was once hailed as the largest blade in the world, striking fear into the hearts of men, now bore no trace of its former glory. Only a shattered heap of iron remained. Back when this heap was still a sword, its owner had tried to fuse it with an unimaginable variety of objects. His mania for modifying the weapon had seen its titanic form incorporate armor, other swords, and even the bones of the dead. Mighty though it already was, he was obsessed by the idea that it could be made yet stronger. The blade slowly began to change color, turning crimson towards its edge. The gradation seemed to symbolize its place on the boundary between this world and the next. Certainly, it had been the difference between life and death to many a friend and foe in the past. But when its owner tried to fuse it with a baby, its blade finally shattered. Discarded as a failed experiment, the sword longed for the days when it had terrified men with its fearsome form. So it searched for an owner who could forge its blade afresh. Crimson Hood Not enough! I haven't had enough! The magician awoke with a start. The axe. Had it spoken to him? Or had he been dreaming? Since that night, the magician's face, recognized throughout the kingdom, slowly seemed to change. After several months, he began to resemble an infamous thief who had terrorized the lands decades before. The thief's soul had resided within the axe for years, waiting for the perfect moment to seize a new body. Though the magician tried to resist, the thief eventually conquered his mind and stole his life. The nobles of the kingdom did not think to question what he did to them. How could they have known that he was no longer his true self? And so they all met a disastrous end, while the magician lived on. Executioner's Song The axe thought to itself, How many heads have I cut off? Over the many years it had executed criminals, traitors, revolutionaries, politicians, even innocents, but it could not remember any of their faces, save for one, a peculiar boy. The boy showed no fear as he placed his head on the block. Even the bravest men harbor a desperate hope at the moment of their death. The axe could feel the rush of their emotions even as it took their life. Not this boy. He was different. His spirit was filled to the brim with hope. It wasn't the false hope of a devout believer, but rather the knowledge that he was there by choice. His spirit was so pure that it made the axe want to scream. The boy's execution was carried out. Among the crowd that gathered to witness the event, a group of young men shed tears. The axe did not understand what it meant. All it knew was that the young men would speak of the boy's high hopes for the world's future for generations to come. Foul Blade A twisted magician sealed a fire lizard into this axe. It would whisper words of hatred for others and drive its owner to madness. A thief who stole this axe soon extended his territory to beyond the neighboring mountains and became the chief of a large group of bandits. A page who acquired this axe became an infamous soldier and was made lieutenant in an order of knights. In the end, however, the axe drove both the thief and the page to kill indiscriminately, and they were murdered by their own men. Morning Thorn I'm so hungry! The hobgoblin decided to help his boss as he always did. Usually he had to get food by helping out with various odd jobs, but today he would get a meal without having to do anything at all. An attack on a human village was planned for the following evening, and a hearty meal was provided in preparation. So they charged into battle, 
expecting a swift victory. But the humans repelled their attack with great determination, and the fight raged on. In the midst of the carnage, the hobgoblin fell into a shallow well. There, he found a magnificent scythe. It was the failed creation of a demented magician. The scythe was designed to increase its wielder's desire to win. In reality, however, it brought out other uncontrollable desires in its wielder. Deemed useless, it had been thrown into the well. The hobgoblin climbed out of the well with the scythe in his hands. Hungry for food and blood, he began to kill humans left and right. But the scythe's power soon began to overwhelm the hobgoblin. When all the humans were dead, he began to bite and maim the other goblins. Even murdering and eating the entirety of his own tribe failed to satiate his appetite. And finally, he slit his own throat with the scythe. It was later found by a beautiful elf. Poison Tongue Long ago, there was a vast kingdom surrounded with water and enclosed by mighty walls. Blessed with the gift of water, the people lived a life of happiness. An altar to the water goddess stood at the center of the kingdom. On it lay an axe, which radiated a calm blue light. Legends told that the goddess used the axe to slay the demon king of drought. Beyond its walls, other nations schemed to steal the prosperous kingdom's wealth. Under the command of their king, the citizens fought bravely, but the peace-loving people of the Water Kingdom were no match for the invaders. Soon, their mighty walls lay in ruins, and the war was on their doorstep. When the flames of war reached the Water Goddess's altar, the axe came to life. Floating above its resting place, its blade gave off a blinding flash of light. The next moment, a tidal wave washed over the invading armies and continued past the kingdom's borders, drowning the land of the enemy. Having served its purpose, the axe lost its luster and the water subsided. Now, the ancient weapon looked as drained and lifeless as the desert. Seal Axe Calamitous Rhythm a master blacksmith, embittered by the gods' maltreatment of the world, vowed to forge a weapon with which to destroy them. The power of the seal negates the power of the gods, and the seal derives its power from the goddess. So the blacksmith sealed the power of the goddess into his creation. She was a legendary goddess who held the seeds within her body and saved mankind from ruin. Sealed inside was time, the conqueror of space and all dimensions. Eurix Axe A king who made offerings to the reaper, hoping to live forever, commissioned this axe to act as an instrument of the gods. Its purpose? To sever the necks of beautiful young men and drink their blood in the reaper's honor. It has tasted the blood of many hundreds, and the reaper has prospered from these tributes. For the first ceremony, the king chose two men and ordered one to execute the other. Every subsequent month, he would choose a new executioner to sacrifice the last. So it continued, year after year, executioners becoming sacrifices until the month of the king's 150th birthday. The pair involved in the ceremony this month were best friends. When one had sacrificed the other, he turned to the king, crying, and said, I shall give my own life to the reaper. I shall walk the road to Hades with my friend. Then he cut off his own head, and the axe pierced the altar so deeply that none could remove it. The king's long life was at an end. The axe finally found its way into the hands of Yurik, where it once more provides sacrifices to the reaper. The cycle of blood which curses it cannot be halted, a secret known only by the reaper himself. Zhangpo's Axe 
In a small village, a man lived with his pet mouse in a shack. He was a kindly soul, but the other villagers mistrusted him because his face had been disfigured since birth. In spite of their prejudice, he harbored no bitterness towards them, smiling even when children threw stones at him. Secretly, the villagers schemed to drive their unsightly neighbor away. So they claimed that his mouth damaged their crops and captured it one day. While he wandered the forest searching for his little companion, they cut off its head and laid its body on his doorstep. When the poor man returned to his shack, he saw that his only friend in the world had been murdered. With a howl of despairing rage, he took his axe and decapitated each of the villagers in turn, piling their heads in the center of the common. To add another to the pile, he then cut off his own, and the axe tumbled from his lifeless grasp. When it was finally retrieved from its grisly resting place, the axe's blade had been dried red by the villagers' blood. Lieutenant Zhang Po, whose pack cost him the pleasures of eating, may have tried to replace the lost sensation with the joy of butchering foes with this axe.